Thank you very much, Jose Luis San Martin. Thank you all. Good afternoon. I have a very short presentation so that you do not suffer with time. I have a first uh, part where I'm going to present COVID-19 and how it has impacted on the Dominican Republic. And the second part will show how COVID impacted Dengue in our country. In the first chart, what you can see are the different phases that we've been through since COVID started. Our country went into lockdown really early in the epidemiological week number 10 with the restrictive measure. This meant to close the country. There was a curfew and you can see how how long did the curfew last it? Our country had three electoral processes, one in February before the pandemic, then in March, and then in July, July the 6th, that we had the presidential elections. This was or this motivated the mm, suspension of the curfew. You see that the green line is here interrupted, and this was a very important moment because the public health authorities really suffered as they couldn't have control on the population and people profited from this, they used it for, for political spaces, political campaigns, and see how the cases increased in an exponential fashion and surrounding week. By the end of July, it is when we had the highest peak. Then the curfew was stated again with very important restrictions, and this controlled the cases, and there was a drop down of the cases. These are the different indicators. The attack rate of 400,000 inhabitants was 275. It reached by the end of July 16.82, and nowadays we are in 2.53, between two and three, really. So it has been decreasing in a significant fashion. The positivity, according to weeks, at the beginning of May, we had almost 20 in july we had almost 36 percent positivity and now our positivity is 28.09 but currently it is between 10 and 13 percent tests per million inhabitants these they have increased in a substantial fashion, and we are almost in 40,000 per million inhabitants. The lethality rate percentage has maintained, and it's between 1.8 and 1.9 nowadays. ICU usage, we will talk about this further on during the presentation. This is to understand the RT in the Dominican Republic, as you can see here on the gray line, the, blue, the black line, it is always below one and as from the second half of August this year is that the RT has dropped below one, giving us or telling us that there is a substantial, a substantial reduction of the infectivity rate. 
This shows the availability and the occupation of COVID beds in blue. The blue, the upper blue line are the COVID-19 beds in orange. The use of ICU beds and in the light blue, you see the he corrects himself. In orange are the ventilators, beds with ventilators, and in light blue is the amount of hospital beds that are in use currently. Our health system was really stressed at the beginning of the pandemic, and we even had sometimes where the bed occupation was above 85%. So there were some facilities, some health facilities that were crashed really with 100% of occupation. This is so that you can understand the situation pre dengue and with uh, pre-COVID and with COVID. And now we're going to analyze dengue and COVID. This is a chart that I usually use to show that the dengue in Dominican Republic has a triennial pattern. We have two years with a high incidence, and then the third year has a lower incidence with compared to the previous one. And this repeats up each after um, each three years. So 2020 was the year with low incidence. How are the data going to be presented? Here we have the data of the epidemiologic religion uh, national system, SINAVA is the acronym. In the pre-pandemic stage or the pre-pandemic period, we used data from 2019 and of 2020 up to the epidemiologic week nine. As intra-pandemic period, we used data as from the epidemic week number 10 until epidemic week number 40 of this current year. So when we perform the comparisons pre and post, the cutoff line is week number nine of 2020. And we must say that the dengue notification or reporting has had a delay of up to two weeks, although dengue is a communicable disease and it is mandatory to report it immediately. So it must be done uh, during the first 24 hours, even under suspicion. The fact of having a possible dengue case makes it mandatory to report it during the first 24 hours. This, if we then analyze dengue as from the first epidemiological week from 2019 and week number 40 of this current year, we see that the dengue has a very clear pattern in the Dominican Republic being a very low incidence in the first six months and then in the second part of the year with a high incidence or high peaks. And when the pandemic started on week number 12, there is a reduction of the dengue cases. We cannot say whether this is an effect of the pandemics because there is a sustained decrease as from September, October last year of the dengue cases. And this decrease when the COVID appears is still stable. There is a very low incidence of dengue during the COVID pandemics. And 
In the orange line, you see the fatality rate. So during the pre-pandemic period, this was really stable with some irregularities or spikes, but after the COVID period or the post-pandemic period, we can see some marked peaks or spikes with important increases. And the last week, there is a 30% fatality rate, but this has to do to, with three cases. This is because we only had on three cases during that week and one of them died. So if we then compare these two periods, pre-COVID and then intra-COVID, we can assess that the lethality rate, the last column here was 0.71%, and this was exactly the same as we what we have observed throughout the last four or five years with a sustained decrease. But with COVID, the lethality rate duplicated and is now in 1.58%, which is a high lethality rate. This is the behavior here we have the proportion of dengue without warning signs, with warning signs, and severe dengue. Without warning sign in blue, with warning signs in orange, and in gray, severe dengue. Pre pandemic period, the proportion was almost stable. of severity per week. But after this black line where the pandemic starts, we can see that there is an important increase of the dengue without warning signs, but also concomitantly, there are more severe dengue cases. Next slide, please. The proportion before and during the COVID-19 pandemics, dengue without alarm signs was 37%, and after, during the pandemic, they were 49%. So this increased. Dengue with alarm, signs of alarm, was 62 pre-pandemic and it dropped to 47 during the pandemia. And the severe dengue duplicated. They went from 2% to 4% during the pandemic. And this is really interesting what we can see. This is the age average per week of the dengue cases. They're all included here with warning signs, without warning signs, and severe. The age average was stable. It was between 10 and 15 years. And with the pandemics, you can see that there are some irregularities with marked increase and spikes that come up to 35 years of age. So there is some effect on, of the COVID on this age average of the patients with dengue. And this is even more interesting. Here we see the proportion of the different age groups according to the epidemiological weeks. Once again, the black line shows the beginning of the pandemic. As we can see here, before COVID-19, 
there was a certain proportion, a stable proportion according to the age groups. But after the COVID-19 started, we see that the colors start mixing up and there is like a puzzle, a very colorful puzzle. So this uniformity that was seen before the pandemic is lost. And the proportions are not kept. This is age average per sex before and during the pandemic. This was increased both for males and for females. From 13 to 23 years, so this is a significant increase during the pandemic. So, to conclude then, COVID-19 did affect the reporting of the dengue cases, though there was a trend to the decrease of the cases during the second half of the year, which is observed on a yearly basis, was not seen this year with the dengue. This might be attributed to several reasons. It might be due to the restrictions, patients required less medical attention, patients couldn't go to the medical centers. Facilities were closed. There was a curfew, so they could not go to the doctors. Another thing that we should think and debate a little more in depth is what we call the misclassification, so that some dengue cases might be reported as other sort of event or disease, and this could be obscene with the Zika outbreak, because at the beginning, many of the cases diagnosed as Zika were in reality dengue cases. Another important thing to take into account is that COVID had an impact in letality or fatality rate. In the Dominican Republic, it went from 0.7 to 1.5 percent, and this requires of a more detailed analysis to really understand what happened with the fatality rate. I think that this is my last slide. Yes, thank you very much.